Good afternoon, everyone. We see the first attendees joining in. Hope you're all excited. Let's wait a bit. Uh, let's wait a bit longer for uh, for other people to join as well. Have you guys uh, been able to try out the new plugin already? It's been available um, since uh, last week already. So you might have you might have seen and heard a bit about it. So, uh, but today we're gonna tell you a bit more. So let us know in the in the chat window how excited you are and uh, whether you've been able to try it already. All right, I see some people already tried it, some people haven't. So maybe, maybe after today, after this session, um, everyone can get started in that and give it a shot. Great. All right, maybe um, I think we can just get started now. Uh, we have enough people here. All right, so good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, my name is Fredo, and I'm here today with uh, David Lee, our head of product design. And in this session, we'll be talking about the new Protobike plugin for Figma and a little bit about the journey uh, behind uh, revamping this um, import experience. Um, throughout the session, feel free to ask us any questions that you have. Make sure to uh, use the uh, Q&A window. So the dedicated Q&A window, not the chat window for any questions. Um, at the end, we'll also have a bit of time for a actual Q&A session. So we'll also uh, cover some questions there as well. Um, and yeah, um, that's it. So over to you, David Lee. Great, thanks for the introduction, Fredo. So as Fredo mentioned, uh, we're going to talk about how we made ProPy plugin for Figma and what you can do with it and what you can expect in the future. So let's start with a video that we uh, recently made. <laughs> Great. Um, every project starts with a problem in ProPy. And when you look at the legacy import, I mean legacy import here, um, since we launched the plugin, um, we call the previous way of import uh, as legacy. So if you look at the legacy import, um, there were so many problems. You had to go through um, many steps to import just one scene. Um, and you have so many options. And furthermore, it was too slow to use at work. So that was a top priority for us uh, to start this project. That's why the legacy import was still in beta. And to tell you about a little bit background about uh, what's the difference between the legacy import and the plugin and why we moved to plugin. With the legacy import, uh, if you look at the left side of the screen, um, each tool, uh, both Figma and ProPy communicates with the Figma server individually. That makes the uh, Figma import slow and also your network speed matters. So if you're in a slow network, then it also affects to the speed of the network of the import. That's why we um, started looking into making a plugin for Figma. Because by using plugin, both tools communicate locally in your computer. That means it's fast and always stable and it works locally. And there's no more like logging in or, or granting process are not required. And it's generally a better workflow because you're sending your design from Figma to ProPy to prototype 
not the other way around, like the old way. So that was the main reason why we moved to plugin. And if you compare the speed between the two, when we tested the simple screen, um, the same simple screen with those two ways of import. And in the test, um, plugin was about six times faster than the legacy import. And it may depend on the situ like situation, your network speed or the complexity of your screen. But generally, I can say it's uh, plugin is much faster than the previous way. And we will continue to improve the speed, of course. This, this is not, not the final result. So we can expect uh, the speed will be much more improved in the um, coming versions. And yeah, that's, that was it. And like we solved the biggest problem uh, by just moving into plugin. And also we did a lot of refactoring into our code. Um, and that also helped to improve the speed. And we'll continue to do that. But that wasn't all the issues that we had to solve. There were so many like UX problems that we still had to solve other than speed. So we had some um, features that we had in mind, but we wanted to extra clear about um, what we are making is fitting users' needs. So we did us uh, and, and people really complained about this legacy import. Like they are saying not being able to trust, like it's a deal breaker, um, very slow, never ending and blurry and ugly and, and, and so many other negative feedbacks. And those were heartfelt for us, but it was also a very good chance for us to um, satisfy our users uh, if we make it right. So we started that uh, step to make it better. And with the features that, that we had in mind, we did a simple survey and uh, asking about what do they experience, uh, how they experience about the current way of import or, and uh, what do they uh, think about the features that we are um, making. And luckily we got around 200 responses from our users. And uh, I really appreciate that uh, those who participated in this survey. And the features that we were making were those six. And then we asked about those to um, how much they need those features at, at their work. And the first one was to uh, import layers as vector. And this was one of the frequently asked uh, requests. And, and of course, so many people like with the legacy import, since it was uh, import, everything is imported in bitmap fo format, people had to redraw things again in ProPy after they import. So by importing everything in vector, um, people can edit the object right away in Puropy. So that was a, that we thought that would, that would be a big advantage for our users. Second one was to import layers, uh, some layers in particular. So with the legacy import again, you, um, even though you change a small thing in a scene, you have, to, you had to import the entire scene, which makes the um, import process very slow. So why not just import the, the, the object that you just updated in Figma and it will be much faster, right? And the third one, um, importing multiple scenes at the same time. And this is obvious, like uh, previously you had to import scene by scene, um, but what if you have multiple scenes that you're uh, in, in, your, in your Figma? And the fourth one, uh, flattening layers, flattening non-interaction layers, which means um, if there are so many layers in, in a scene and it's hard to find the layers that you want to add interactions to it. So some people want to flattening other layers that they don't want to focus on. 
So that was one of the features. And also importing prototypes from Figma. So you make a simple click-through prototype from uh, in Figma, and then after import, you do more sophisticated uh, interaction work in ProPy. And the last one was to import components. So many people already have design system uh, in their company. And uh, many people take advantage of that efficiency that they have around uh, design systems. And since uh, ProPy also has component system, why not sync them together across those tools so that you can just um, simply change something in, in the main components and everything in, uh, in the instance uh, changed accordingly. So you can take the same advantage in ProPy as well. So with those six features, uh, we laid out into a impact by efficiency map. So if you look at the y-axis, it's an impact scale. So higher the, uh, the higher the, the, those are the features that are more are highly requested. And also if you look at the x-axis, it's efficiency scale. And which means going to the right, it's, it's for us to ship fast to the users. So if you are looking at the top right corner, um, a, B, and C are uh, uh, asked um, many times and also for us ship fast. So those are the, we selected those three features for the first version of our plugin, which are included in the current version. You can use, use them right away. And for importing components, though this was also uh, highly rated. And we think, we, we think also it's very important but for us, it, because of the complexity of um, building that feature, uh, we're looking into uh, in, include the, this feature into one of the next versions. And all other features are also in our radar, but they are just not in the top priority at the moment. So let's look at the A, B, and C for now uh, and today. So let's look at A, import layers as vector. Um, how we made and what, uh, what are the limitations and what thought we went through. So this, I'll show you a video. This is a typical thing many people do in ProPy with the legacy way of import. So let's say you design the camera app like this and you want to change the color of the button when tapped. But since the button is in bitmap, you had to draw a new overall shape in ProPy again. And rename it, of course. And delete the old one. And you match the color with the original design. And now you are able to add interactions to it. So that was a long process even like doing this simple work, like changing the color of an object, you have to recreate things that you already created in Figma. So that's, that was very cumbersome and redundant work. And so I'll show you how it's changed with the plugin. So I prepared uh, some screens here uh, by clicking the right mouse button here and I can find the ProPy plugin here. And once you select any uh, top frame, um, it's saying uh, you're about to export uh, one scene to ProPy and I hit export. And now it's done. You, as you can see, it's much faster than before. Uh, and there was no options at all. Like you, it, it's just there without any uh, broken properties here. So if I do the same with, with this way, um, I have this button here since it's vector, but I'll, I'll explain this later, but I have to convert to shape once to change its, any of its properties. So I, uh, when, when it's tapped, 
I want to change its color to, let's say, yellow. And let's preview it. So it's done, right? I didn't recreate anything in ProtoPy. I just simply converted it into shape uh, before um, changing its properties. So everything is alike uh, in, in this screen. So it, it's very simple. Like you don't have to do much before actually adding uh, interactions to any of the vector objects here. Let's try another thing. Let's import sign in screen here. Also, it's quite fast. Um, and let's say I wanted to change the color of this button. So I can just uh, change the color to blue here. And somehow I want to change the radius of the button. And it all, like it just works, right? You can edit it right away as, as everything is in vector and you can edit everything. Um, so, and let's just try out this screen, more uh, realistic screen that you would have designed. So yeah, that it's important fast and there's no um, lost properties here. So um, it's, as you can see, it's fast and uh, import everything as it is. Um, but I mean, this is not the final version. We'll continue to improve. So there are some limitations and we want to share it. Let's import those three uh, circles here. And when I convert this, like when I try to edit its properties, uh, when I convert to shape and it seems like not, nothing happens, right? And you can change its color um, or add border to it or even add shadow. So you can edit its properties and when you convert to shape, uh, it seems like nothing happens. But this circle has a gradient color, which ProtoPy doesn't support yet. So when you convert to shape and its property is lost because we don't support the gradient yet. So that's why we had to have a this interim vector uh, format in ProtoPy to display everything that you uh, display all the properties that you have uh, in designed in Figma. Um, but once you want to uh, edit them, uh, you have to convert to shape once um, and you can edit everything that is supported by ProtoPy, but the properties that are not supported by ProtoPy will be lost in this case. Um, and dotted lines are not supported yet in ProtoPy. And when you convert it, um, it maps ProtoPy match with the closest shape as, as ProtoPy can. So rather than like removing the border whole together, um, border is still there as a solid, di solid line. So, uh, so some of the properties are lost. Uh, that's why we had to keep those interim uh, vector shape in ProtoPy to um, faithfully display everything uh, all the properties that you have in Figma. And I mean, this is a, also a temporary solution for us. And as we are um, supporting more properties like gradients, individual corner radius, and so forth, um, we want to make everything editable right away after you import. But for now, uh, since the limitations we have, we have to have the interim vector shape here so that you can uh, convert once to use it. Hopefully that explains the current limitation of the Figma, uh, I mean the ProPy. And we also um, added a um, constraint. So this is aligned to the top, aligned to the bottom, aligned to the center. So I, when I scale the parent component, I mean parent um, frame, it works like this. So 
So the same in propy. So let's change everything to the bottom constraints. Now it should work something like this. So when I export it and the constraints should be imported. So it works the same way in Figma. So you can also, what we added for this version is that you can also use the same constraints that you set in Figma. All right. Um, so yeah, I already explained this and also constraints. So yeah, as I mentioned, there are some limitations, but we'll continue to support those features uh, in the near future. And the biggest advantage here is that you can um, use vector shapes and, and um, change its properties, whatever you want uh, that are supported by ProPy. Um, so that will reduce some amount of work that you, uh, after you import and before you start uh, prototyping. That was the first part. And the second part, importing some layers in particular, and this was the most challenging part for us. I'll start with the demo. So let's say we have a review screen here. I want to import and it's here. And um, somehow after I import, I just want to change um, the ratings. So I should be four out of five. So I changed the text here as well. So rather than, I mean, you can import the whole scene again, but rather than importing the whole scene, you can only select those two objects that you just updated. And then it's now saying you're about to export two objects that you selected to ProPy. So let's hit export. And only those are applied in uh, ProPy. So that's much faster than importing the whole scene, although you can uh, import the whole scene. So it's generally much faster. Let's um, change the text here as well. I change the text and then only grab the text. I export it and it's changed it. So it's that fast. And let's try this screen as well. By the way, some of the screens here are the design by Figma community. So some of the screens we designed, but like especially this screen is designed by someone else from the Figma community. Um, and um, so sa same here, uh, after you import, you somehow want to change something here. Let's change the color of the, um, let's more dramatically change the color and uh, remove the, let's say, uh, let's remove the radius here, right? And then select only this object and export. And then this is changed accordingly. So like the importing the scene, I mean, it's also importing one, some of the object in a scene is also very fluent and you don't have to think about whether it's a scene or object. It's just, you can just select what you want and then export. But there are more complicated cases. Like for example, uh, as, I showed, um, as I showed you just now, like after import a, this rounded rectangle and in ProPy you make it make every corner sharp and then import this again uh, in ProPy to ProPy, what, what should happen? Like, should it still remain in the sharp rectangle or should it go back to the uh, original state of the rounded rectangle? What's the right way? So we, the biggest change we did in this version of plugin, um, we respect user's intention. So, which means that uh, with the legacy import, even though you change uh, things in ProPy, when you import Figma again, 
everything is overwritten uh, with the design that you designed in Figma. So everything you did in ProPy are neglected. So that that we see that that's very um, that doesn't make sense, and that's why people are afraid to import things again after the in initial import. So we decided to um, respect every uh, action that users take in ProPy. So for example, let's say, so let's do a simple thing here. Okay, let's try this one. All right, so I have a overlay panel and I want this panel to be appeared from the bottom. And I also want this overlay to be uh, transparent. And when I, only when I tapped this uh, right button here and I want everything starts move. So here, um, when I tap this button, I want this overlay opacity to um, 60%. And also I want this uh, panel in the bottom of the screen to move up to the original state uh, with uh, duration of 0.4 second. So let's try that. So it works. So I, to try to make some interactions, I intentionally make some changes in Puropy. But what if I, let's say, oh, there's, um, there's save button, but I um, supposed to have it in all cap. For example, I changed some of the, some parts of the design. I mean, of course you can do it in Puropy, but some people want to have the latest design in Figma. So um, as I mentioned earlier, you change this. So you grab only this object and then export, and then it's applied here. So um, the position is relative to its parent. You don't have to worry about like it's being uh, in like somewhere here again, but it's still there as you expect it. And what about importing the whole scene here? Like sh with the legacy import, like you, this panel will be here again. So you you like, you're complaining about it and then you have to like drag it again to, to where it was. But with the new uh, plugin, um, even though you export this, like the position doesn't move. And then also the overlay was here, which had a 60% uh, transparent. Um, it's, since you set the opacity to zero in ProPy, it's also regarded. So we don't change that. So um, everything you did in ProPy is respected and, and that's, um, that information is synced across the tools. All right, and um, with the legacy input, that's why we had, I mean, that's, I, we had those options like, uh, but nobody understand what, what those means. And I mean, the those options also have uh, some limitations. So like nobody, like looking at our data, nobody uses it, it's complicated. So we decided to just remove it and um, replace with, and the we set our own logic to um, respect the user's action in ProPy. And for us, that was more clear, but I mean, that's not the, we understand that's not perfect yet. So we want to also um, improve that logic by getting your feedback. That was our first version. And um, there were more complicated situations we had to think about. Like what happens if you 
uh, change the order of the layers. What happens if you uh, grouping a list of layers to make them scrollable? Or what if you ungroup them and import again, what happens? Or what if you remove a, some of the objects in a scene and, and import again, what happens? Like we had to go through all like all those like complicated situations and edge cases uh, that we didn't even mention here. And um, among many cases, I'll just demonstrate uh, one of the um, considerations we did. Um, when you remove things, how uh, we thought about how should we uh, react to it. So let's import this search screen here. And then what you normally do here is that since this search panel is not um, interactive, you normally add an input layer here and then design the same as you designed in um, Figma. You can change the radius, change the color of the background, change the placeholder, things like that. I'll not, I'll not here, do, do it here. Uh, and then you delete the old one. So now you can uh, make the input layer interactive. And somehow in Figma, you let's say you made a um, object in the scene. Okay. And you want like you have you have several objects here and there, for example. I mean it's ugly, but as a test. Um, and what happens with the legacy import, this is this was imported again, and you have to delete that again in Puropy. That's why people don't import again once they made a change in, in Figma. But um, with the plugin, let's export this to Puropy. And all those newly created layers are all here, but not the input box. Because I intentionally deleted the input box from Puropy, so that's regarded. So you don't have to delete it again in Puropy, even though you import the whole scene again. So um, let's delete this. So if I delete those, so those shouldn't be uh, imported again, like this. And yeah, that you can, yeah, that's without that, there was much more efficient, but somehow you don't need this anymore and then you want the original design back. And then in, in, if that's the case, uh, you can just simply grab this object and then export, and then it's there. So uh, by clicking the whole scene, uh, everything, this, every action you did in Puropy um, is regarded, but like when you select a, the specific object here and to export, and then that is um, imported again in Puropy. And let's see. Okay. okay, so that's one of the considerations we did. And there are numerous cases we had to deal with because there were so many edge cases here. And we still think it's not perfect. So uh, we need your feedback while you're using it. Um, and that was the second part. So uh, there was so many cases that we had to go through, uh, but we, uh, the biggest change is that we, instead of giving you a bunch of options, we set a logic and hopefully that, uh, hopefully it helps you to your work, uh, to you, you to work more efficiently. Let's look at the third one, importing multiple scenes at once. This was relatively uh, simple. Uh, with the legacy import, 
you had to import scene by scene and there's no visual cue of the scene. So you have to select by the name of the scene. And you also have to setting up a density for that scene. But with the plugin, as you saw, like you can import either single or multiple scenes at once and you're visually selecting screens. So there's no confusion at all. And you don't have to set the density um, anymore because it's already set in Kuropi. So let's see how it works. So I prepared a three screens here with simple shapes. So when I selected those three shape, I mean scenes, it's saying I'm about to export three scenes to Puropy and hit export. And then as you can see here, there are three scenes here as I expected. And you can also try, I can try out more complex scenes. Um, and it takes a bit longer, but you can select as many screens as you want like this. And you can just simply um, add jump interaction um, to each screen so that you can um, connect all those screens. So that was about importing multiple screens. So that, that was also, um, we think it's much more uh, simpler than before. And before releasing this, our first plugin, we did a simple user test. And we discovered two things from this user test with, that we didn't uh, thought about. So the first one was that uh, when you import multiple scenes, people didn't aware that multiple scenes were imported when the scene panel was closed. So they have to open it again to check uh, all those three scenes were imported uh, correctly. So we decided, like after discovered this, we decided to open up the panel scene panel, even though they are closed, uh, so that people know they are all there. But um, Currently, with the current version, the scene panel is always opening. So that's disturbing. So we'll, in the next version, we'll only open that scene panel only when you import multiple scenes uh, with the initial import. So basically, when you only want to confirm um, the, lay, uh, the scenes. The second problem was, was very tricky to discover. So, when we did, when we um, think about when you export the button here in, in this plugin, and as soon as you click the export button, we thought ProPy window should be, should bring to the top of the screen because you don't have any reason to remain in uh, Figma anymore because you are going to work in ProPy. So that was more logical and better experience for our users. But uh, while we're doing user tests, uh, some people experiencing the, the speed, like it was too slow. So we're, as we are digging into the problem, we found out that if the um, Figma's app window is um, hidden by other screens in the other uh, app uh, windows in the screen, and then it lowers its performance and it affects to the performance of the import as well. So that's why we couldn't bring the ProPy window to the top right away, af right after you hit the export button, uh, because there's a possibility that the Figma window is hidden by ProPy and then that will affect the performance of the import. So that was an interesting discovery for us. So yeah, in overall, like we improved five areas of import and it's much faster as in vector. We also import constraints. You can also import multiple scenes and uh, 
last but not least, um, no confusing options. So um, hopefully you can enjoy those features. And for those of you who didn't install the plugin yet or not familiar with Figma yet, um, you can go to the community tab in Figma app to download Protopy and search for Protopy up top here and go to plugin tab. Then you can install Protopy plugin here. And by clicking the right mouse button on any canvas, you can find the ProPy plugin here, and then you can use the plugin as I uh, demonstrated today. And for those of you might need legacy way of import, uh, you can still find it here in the menu. So it's still there. And as I mentioned, that was our first step of our plugin. We have so many things to this um, cover in the coming versions, like auto conversion of input layers. Like you still have to create input layer again, but like we want to automatically convert the input layer from Figma to ProPy. And also we have to support auto layout components, variants and prototypes. And in parallel, uh, we're working on uh, supporting gradients, individual corner radius, multiple shadows, um, etc. And also we're improving our speed constantly and our logic and fixes some bugs uh, that are still out there. So that was uh, our plan. Uh, that is our plan for the coming versions. And we're not only making this plugin for Figma, we're making plugin for Adobe XD and it's coming next year, January. And also there will be also a plugin for Sketch as well. So you can expect it um, next year, sometime next year. So thank you. And I will uh, hand my mic over to Fredo. Thank you, David, for the uh, amazing presentation. Uh, that was very insightful. Um, so yeah, let's move over to the um, Q&A session. Um, we already answered a few questions that we received in the Q&A window, but if you have any more questions, um, feel free to share with us um, in the Q&A window. We have a bit of time and, and we will be able to cover your questions. So I'd love to uh, receive, receive some more questions uh, that David and I uh, can possibly answer. I think David, you're you've been very, uh, very, very clear in your presentation. All right, let's wait a bit more. Yeah, we'll definitely um, share the link afterward. We've been recording this session. So um, we'll upload it to YouTube. And once that is ready, um, we'll share that with, uh, with everyone who registered um, for this event. Cool. <laughs> All right, I don't think there will be any more questions. Um, uh, I think the plugin, uh, you know, it's so easy to use and uh, David has been very clear, so. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for attending this event. Um, hope you will like the uh, Protopipe plugin. Um, do you move to the next slide? Um, as David mentioned, um, there are more things on the roadmap in regards to the plugin. Um, but throughout, we'll love to hear your feedback. So um, let us know. There's a feedback button um, in the lower right corner of the plugin. Um, next, please. And other than that, we actually have a dedicated um, dedicated place where we actually collect all of our feature requests. So let us know what you need. You, you can add any feature requests and upvote for others that have already been added. So the link would be protopi.canny.io. And once again, thank you uh, for joining this event. 
Um, feel free to join uh, one of our Protobike communities. You'll be able to find uh, the links in the chat. There you go. And yeah, more to come. And we'd we'll love to see you at the uh, next event in the, in the new year. Thank you for joining, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining.